Welcome, everybody. This is For the Love of Money, where we are making you unapologetic about your pursuit of success by sharing the tools, tips, and stories of those who have already made it. My name is Chris Harder, and each week I will bring you incredible guests in order to prove that when good people make good money, they do great things. Welcome back, everybody, to another mini episode of For the Love of Money, episodes that I like to call My Two Cents. And today, I wanted to tell you a story that happened to us the other morning. So my wife, Lori, and I were driving to one of our normal routine workouts. We were headed to Soul Cycle, and we we're having one of our typical great mornings, having fun, laughing. You know, we've got a great morning routine down. Then about 10 blocks into this ride, we passed a gentleman who appeared to be ready for his workday, walking out to his car, I assume getting ready for his commute. Now, completely out of the blue, for no explainable reason, said gentleman sees us driving down the road in his direction and instantly gives Lori and I the finger. And he didn't just give us a quick finger. No, it was a 110% hand way out, full extension of the arm. Make sure you keep that finger up and follow us with that finger as we drive by kind of finger. I mean, honestly, I give this dude an A plus for effort on his, mid his middle finger ability. But here's what's so crazy about it. There was nothing to solicit this finger. You know, we were going the speed limit, actually below. Uh, we had no loud music. Um, you know, we don't know the guy, never seen him in our lives. And we were really just keeping to ourselves. I mean, heck, the dude wasn't even close to the car or he didn't have to move or wasn't even remotely affected by our passing by. Except for the fact that we were in a new Ferrari. That's it. For no apparent reason other than his pure hatred of wealth. This guy just up and gave us the best effort that he could possibly muster up at making sure we saw his distaste for such a gaudy car or whatever it represented to him. Now, listen, I get it. Not everybody has mastered their money mindset, to say the least, or their appreciation of wealth as its ability to be a positive tool, a tool for good. Heck, that's the whole reason I started this podcast is to spread these ideas and, and share stories like this. And listen, don't feel sorry for us because we knew that buying a car like this or having a home like this or sometimes wearing clothes like this or that or having a bag like this or that will push people's buttons. It'll hit a sore spot because of a story they've built up in their head, you know, based on something that's happened in the past about those who have, have, who have wealth. So, no, don't feel sorry for us in this story, but I ask you to please feel sorry for this guy. Feel sorry for him because I did. I mean, at first I was bothered by it. The first few minutes, you know, I was kind of angry and it kind of spoiled my morning. But the rest of the time, I just felt compassion for him. I mean, what kind of pain did he have to have experienced to solicit such a reaction to a stranger driving by. You know, what kind of hurt did he or his loved ones endure to hate those with wealth so much? You know, we don't know his backstory, but it can't be a good one. And so for that reason, I feel bad for the guy. That can't feel good. Going around, giving everybody the middle finger every day just because of your view of your own financial status or what you have or don't have. That's not a good feeling for anybody. But now here is the great irony. Here's why I tell you this story. You will never be able to change your current situation if you have any hatred towards the people who are in the situation that you would rather be in. Let me repeat that. You will never be able to change your current situation if you have any hatred whatsoever towards people who are already in the situation where you'd rather be. That goes for anything. Let me give you another spin on this. For as long as you have judgment, for as long as you have distrust, 
For as long as you have anger towards those who are already where you'd rather be, you'll never get there yourself. You will be stuck forever where you are today or even worse. You can't hate wealth but want it at the same time. You can't judge accomplishment but desire to achieve at the same time. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't work in your brain. It doesn't work in your heart. It doesn't work when it comes to energy or the law of attraction. You can't have something that you push away with your mind and your actions. So if you've ever found yourself with these thoughts, even on a much smaller scale, even if they just creep in once in a while, sometimes it's in anger or hatred or jealousy or judgment, even if it's on a far less aggressive scale than this gentleman, because listen, we've all had them. We've all been there. I offer this to you. The next time you see somebody who has clearly accomplished a lot, regardless of what form you see it in, ask yourself this. What if that individual gives 10, 20, 40%, even 90% of their income to charity and still has enough left over to treat themselves to something they enjoy as a reward for their hard work and for their ability to create, thus allowing them to both live and give so largely? Ask yourself, what if they donate time on a regular basis, not just money, but time and effort on a regular basis because of the freedom that they have freed up thanks to that wealth that they have created? What if the next time somebody drives by with a, I don't know, a several hundred thousand dollar car, you wonder if they use that vehicle to give rides to kids with disabilities who love cars, you know, like I did growing up. Should they, what, just sell it and stop giving these dream rides to these kids in need? What if that individual has pledged to give away the bulk majority of their net worth through a foundation such as the Giving Pledge, which has already encouraged 158 and counting of the world's wealthiest individuals to publicly dedicate the majority of their wealth to philanthropy upon their death? You know, what if in order to be able to afford such a car or a bag or that house or whatever it is that is triggering this emotion inside of you, What if this guy or gal had to offer more value, had to create more value, had to give more value than anybody else through the creation and sale of products and services that have helped the lives of millions of people who would not otherwise have said products or services? I ask, have you given as much value as you would like to give up to this point? I know I haven't given as much value as I want to be able to give up to this point. Or what if the next time you see this person, what if you're right? What if the guy is just a greedy asshole? But everyone else who's driving these similar cars, living in these similar homes, carrying these similar types of bags, or wearing these similar types of clothing, what if everybody else does some or all of the above that I've mentioned? Are they not making the current affairs of the world a much better place thanks to their success and sequentially than their ability to give? So I feel bad for that guy the other morning or for anyone who's had these thoughts, who feel trapped by these thoughts, who feel the pain by literally feeling these thoughts on a regular basis. I know that You have to have experienced some painful things to have formed such a judgmental opinion of the wealthy. You know, somebody from that world must have left a scar on on you or your family. I see it all the time. The judgments, the comments, it's becoming an epidemic, a class war. Rude comments and judgments on people's Facebook posts. I hear it in conversations passing by. I read it in judgmental, self-righteous blogs that people write. It's everywhere. Again, another reason I started this podcast to help shift this negativity that we're seeing out there. I would much rather see an abundance of positivity in production than an abundance of this negativity. So I encourage you, I ask you, what if you became more open to viewing those who have worked hard, sacrificed for a long time, taken risks, and added massive value 
And those who give more to this world than the average person who is just barely getting by is able to give right now. What if you viewed them with appreciation and even as mentors for you to find your passion and then monetize it and thus be able to do the same? What kind of positive impact could you leave as your legacy? Now, I'm guessing that you've had some or that you have some incredible gifts to share with with this world and in return could make enough of a fortune by sharing these gifts in order to donate and create impact on whatever part of the world you see fit. I hope this turnaround happens for everyone. But to experience this turnaround, the first thing that has to turn around is your mindset, the color goggles that you view the world through. You don't get the prize first and then suddenly view it with appreciation. No, you first view it with appreciation and then you get the prize. Listen, if you're listening to this type of podcast, then you're probably not one of these people that, that I'm talking to or that I'm referring to. Or at least you're well on your journey toward shifting your money mindset towards the positive. But there are clearly a lot of people out there who do need to hear this, who do need a shift in their mindset. So I ask you, if you know somebody who needs this new point of view, please share this with them. Because this is the very reason that I had started this podcast in the first place, to squish this war on wealth and instead get everyone to thrive so that we can all make as large of a difference as we were meant to in the first place. And when we all finally get whatever it is that we're after, whenever we get everyone to bust through these you know, negative financial or money mindsets, then remember, that's when it'll all happen. That's when good people make good money. They start doing great things. Thanks for listening. And if you loved this episode and know of someone else who is as successful as they are generous, please pass them on to me. It would mean the world to me if you help me get this cause and this message out to as many listeners as I can. So please, if you liked what you heard, it goes a long way if you take 30 seconds and leave me a five-star review and share this with your friends. I'll be forever grateful. And until the next episode, cheers to your success.